Over the years, when I started, it was impossible to keep pulse coral and soft corals, and it took many years before we could grow hard corals. In 1987, I believe that was the first year we could grow SPS, and success has come in steps that have been very small, with knowledge, and has been hard work. When I first started keeping marine fish, and that was when I was about 28 to 30 years of age, I was really interested in the corals. I kept tropical fish before that. As the years have gone by, we've been able to learn to grow the corals. And then as I've been able to grow more and more corals, I've wanted to put more and more fish in. So I have no favorite fish and I have no favorite coal. I have a desire to have an ecosystem that looks and feels like what you see when you're diving. When I was eight, I just loved to have some goldfish and I was lucky enough that my parents bought me a bowl and some plants in a small fish tank and I started keeping fish from the age of eight. Flow in a marine tank is fundamental for many of the corals. And without it, the conditions deteriorate and they don't survive. This is very noticeable when you dive, especially if you, like me, have done many drift dives. The amount of flow in the sea is quite incredible. And you don't realize it if you just go swimming in it near the, sat near the shore. Corals need flow to keep them fed and in good health. The reason I have a lot of flow is that I have a closed loop system where you can't see them, but they're delivering an awful lot of water with them in the tank. And that's fundamental to success. And it replicates what you see in the sea. As for the lighting, We've changed over in the last few years to LEDs. They were not powerful enough 
four or five years ago. Today they are, and they have one great advantage. They produce very little heat, and they also can be spectrum adjusted. And if you're a diver, you will know that as you go down into the depths, everything gets darker and the redshift is filtered out by the seawater. And we try to replicate that in our tanks for some corals, especially the deep water ones, so they survive. They will not tolerate bright sunlight. There are 400 fish or more in my tank and I feed them live shrimp every day. I feed also frozen mysis, brine, lobster eggs, krill and rotifers and they're all mixed up together and I make the food once a month in advance in big ice cubes and put 250 grams of these cubes in the tank a day. We also give the tangs who require vegetation, nori and a complete Roman lettuce. Started diving. Uh, when I was 17, I was taught to dive. And I've dived probably in most seas over the world. And of course, that helped me get a very good grip of what's going on in the reef tank. The real answer to that is, I love the hobby and I thought I would put back into the hobby a lot of knowledge that was missing in the retail shops. So I decided that we would start having some of the products that I'd been successful with that weren't even available in the UK. We started the company and we've built it up since then. Well, I think the most important thing about reef keeping is to understand that you are not reef keeping, you're keeping water. Keep the water correct and the rest will follow.